So welcome back to another episode of the Wrestling Record podcast. I'm Ryan Charlie, and as usual, I'm joined by Dean Hagerty and Martin Gillian. And we've got some special guests today, father and daughter duo, Grace McEntee and Phil McEntee. It's a pleasure to have both of you on. Hi there, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you, Phil? Yeah, we're very good, thank you. Bearing up. That's brilliant. And um, we're going to start straight with Martin's questions here. Hi, hi, Phil. Um, we just we were just wondering how 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 things been for you and the and the family over the past couple of months. Um, <clears throat> listen, the answer to that is uh, it was all doom and gloom initially in the first week or so, but there's been a lot of positives have come out of it. You know, take put the non racing aside, the whole country. You know, there's been a lot of deaths, there's been a lot of drama, but. Over here, especially, the government has been really helpful to small businesses like our own. So on a purely personal and financial level, um, it's been it's been OK. You know, we were one of the small businesses that was entitled to a grant. Um, so we have we were we got that very early on. Uh, we've got 12 months business rate relief. Our business rates are a thousand pounds a month, you know, so. It, it, it's been financially, I mean, the government have really looked after us. And from a small business financial point of view, we're OK, you know. Um, that's been purely selfish, though, you know. The, obviously, you know, there's been no racing, um, et cetera. But, you know, as I say, from, from my personal financial point of view, it's been OK. We've had we've chucked all the horses out literally within a week of it happening. Um to give all our owners a chance and uh, we're lucky we rent 20 acres off the jockey club so we've kept half a dozen horses in for grace and katie another girl who works for me to go have them something to ride out and keep them ticking over and keep their brain sharp you know but um yeah it hasn't been the end of the world is it is it giving you some time to spend with the family rather than uh, perhaps having to work all the time as well well, listen, that, you know, again, that on a personal level, of course it has. My wife works um, at the Bedford Lodge Hotel in Newmarket. She's been furloughed off, so she's been off for six, seven weeks. Um, my eldest daughter has been at university for three years. She started working last year when she got back from uni. She's been furloughed off. Um, so, um, as I say, my and, and then my youngest daughter is doing an apprenticeship in admin and recruitment at the British Racing School. And, They've kind of had a, a system where they're working two weeks on, two weeks off. So my wife and the three daughters that live at home, um, we've all been at home together. So um, I'm not going to lie, the house is, <laughs> my wife's responsible for decorating inside and we've been doing the projects outside. So we're lucky. The weather's been really good, hasn't it? You know, um, we're lucky. We've got a nice yard. We've got plenty of space. And, you know, so, yeah, it, we're not driving up and down the M25, having horses run bad, Grace giving them bad rides and lots of stress going on. So <laughs> that's the flip side of it. Grace is shaking her head at me, of course, when I mentioned that. Uh, we saw we saw on Twitter the other day, actually, Grace digging up the uh, the path with the, with, with the drill there. Um, that's right. Is that, yeah, is that we, training um, or is that work? Well, no, it, well, listen, we've got... Um, Katie, one of the girls who works for me, her stepdad, Jason, that's what he does as a business. So um, him and Katie, myself, we put in, yeah, exactly. We put a new pathway where all the holes were in the yard. Anyway, we tidied that up and then we built a um, car park down by the house with the next project. And then starting on Monday, we're going to build a couple of washdown bays uh, for the horses as well, which were projects that were never going to get done when you're constantly on the road and working. And, and so... Yeah, listen, there's plenty being done, um, lots of time to sit back and reflect. And by the time we get going in a fortnight, I'm sure we'll look, the batteries will be well and truly charged up. Hey, that's, really, that's really good to hear. You sound, you're sounding very positive, which which is great. Do you think a lot of the smaller yards like yourself in the, in the local area, have they been able to benefit from the, the, the sort of the grants and that as well? Are they, are they, they have, of- listen, obviously, yeah. I mean, it was something that, we became aware of very early there was a cup a fortnight or so when we didn't know whether we qualified for the sport and leisure industry as racehorse trainers but once we discovered there was a bit of lobbying by the national trainers federation the new market trainers federation with the government and uh it was established as i say a fortnight into it that we were going to be entitled to these grants and obviously 
I stand on Hamilton Hill at the back of the yard here every day with 10 other trainers, smaller trainers either side of us. And we all were aware and shared the links and, and, the, and, and we had, we'd, we'd set up a WhatsApp group and we were keeping everyone informed. And yeah, so all of the smaller guys, to be honest with you, it, the bigger trainers didn't qualify for these grants. So um, yeah, uh, uh, the smaller yards especially, we all got some form of grant, whether it was the 10 grand or the 25 grand grant, and we all got business rate relief. And ultimately, they're the things that you know make or break us. You can imagine somebody like me, we've got 20 horses in training. If you're paying 12 grand a month is a year business rates, that makes or breaks you every year. So for us, um, going forward, financially it's been a huge upheaval for us all and, and we're all in a better place than we were when it's before it started that's that's just fantastic really pleased to hear because i did read your uh, an article you did uh, back in march where things weren't looking so good um, that's right exactly right. that was that was the initial reaction in the first fortnight when we thought holy smoke because obviously you know that's short term and selfish long term how it's going to affect our owners that's going to have a bigger uh, implication, if you know what I mean. But so far, so good. My owners, you know, again, they're small businessmen, um, but they all seem to have been weathering the storm. And, um, you know, as and when things resume next month, we've got 12, 14 more horses to bring in from over the road. And then, you know, rather than have a team of horses for the all weather that we've been running during the summer on the turf we're going to have a fresh batch of horses so in my head sort of we're focusing on our all weather really we're going to have a half a dozen horses to run during the summer the the hot the sad thing about it is grace's career kind of came to a bit of a halt you know she was flying at the time and and it, so it's affected her more than it has me so so how are you grace how are you feeling about things at the moment um Obviously, the situation isn't ideal, but obviously things could be a lot worse. Um, but to be fair, it was just a bit gutting for me originally because I had such a good winter and things were finally getting rolling and I was getting constant outrides and the winners were coming in. So it would be nice to have carried that on into the turf season. But um, considering the circumstances, I'm just happy to be safe and well. Yeah, we should, we should actually say congratulations on the uh, Apprentice Hands and Heels series win. Um, Thank you. That was that was uh, very very good. Did you did you set yourself any further targets for this year, and do you think they're still attainable? Um, well, it's kind of just to continue and just get as many outside rides as I can, and just expand a little bit more, um, and kind of just progress as much as I could. But the target for the all weather season was to try and finish in the top three for the Apprentice series, um, which I finished second in to um, George Rook, who won it. So to do that was quite good because that was one of the achievements I wanted to do. So for now, it's just to, it was just to try and keep the ball rolling, keep things going well. Well, I hope, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll be back racing soon and you can, you can jump back aboard some of your dad's horses there. So when, when you bring horses back in, roughly how long does it take to, to get them up to speed and get them ready for, for a race day? Um, that would kind of each individual horse is different. So we've got some of the older sprinter horses, sprint horses such as Bernie's Boy, um, which wouldn't take as long. Cause it'd probably maybe take to seven, eight weeks. Um, whereas if you've got a more of a heavier kind of slower type of horse like Split Down South, he could possibly take eight to nine weeks. So it just depends, really. Okay. And uh, we saw London was was back being ridden again this week. Um, he's been off the track since 2018, is it? Yeah, no, he unfortunately had a, um, he got a bit of a leg injury on in his last run. Um, <clears throat> prior to that, he'd had one or two disappointing runs, and these things are always possibly lurking in the background, you know. Um, but he's a horse that we felt it wasn't that bad an injury. Um, time was always going to be his asset, and um you know, he's so well handicapped now. We thought, why not? We'll give him all the time in the world. Um, the guy, Trevor, who owns him, he's a patient owner. He's a very lucky owner, you know. And um, we um, took the decision to, he was in his, he had six weeks in his box and then six weeks on the walk. And then we turned him out for basically a year. Um, and he's back in. He's had three months on the walker and he's back trotting now. So he'll be trotting for a month and then we'll, he's one we'll have for the, we're looking for the back end. He really loves soft ground on the turf. Um, and off that sort of mark, um, yeah, he's a horse. As I say, 
it, it wasn't that bad an injury that you 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 wouldn't think about giving him the time, you know. So um, yeah, he's he's one we're really looking forward to. Do you, do you actually have a view yet of when we think we'll be racing again? Or is it still? Uh, listen, obviously, we have our date set, June the 1st. Um, the pessimist in me will say, I, I, uh, it's got to be 50-50, you know? I mean, uh, perhaps, from what I gather, you know, there are still some hoops to be jumped through and protocols and things that have got to be, boxes that have got to be ticked that haven't been yet. In order for it to happen, you know, um, um, you know, from as far as the government's concerned, things are going the right way with regard to the coronavirus. But I just, just not sh- entirely sure. We had another timeline and uh, information sent out from the BHA yesterday. Um, so all the participants, there's forms that we have to fill in and and things that we have to do as attendees, i.e. trainers, jockey, stable staff. So there's plenty for us to do. We've got this new vaccination app that's been set up that everybody's got to get to grips with, um, horses that are going to be running. So there's still plenty got to be done. Um, but so I'll say I'm going to be pessimistic and say it's 50-50, but um, we'll see. We're targeting Kempton two weeks today with Bernie's boy as our comeback runner, should he get in. Um this is going to be the problem, you know. I've penciled in a 60 handicap for him. We're rated 57. I have no idea if that's going to get you in. Yeah, I think that's going to be the other problem, isn't it? There's so many, obviously, everybody wants to run. Um, yeah, exactly. And, you know, obviously, the, the two-year-olds at races are going to split first. And if they have to split three times, they will. And the rest of us, nothing else is going to split. So, um, yeah, listen, we're being the optimist in me is we're going to gallop that horse again this weekend. He was second on his last two starts. If anything in my yard, it's going to win first time up um, and get the ball rolling again because that's just as important for me now as anything is to get Grace going again because we spent all winter, you know, we set off in October. It was a bit of a dribble and it was a bit of a slow start and then we got going and by January, February, she was flying, riding every day. Um, other trainers had started using her. Obviously, with the lockdown, um, she couldn't ride out for trainers. It's only rich, really in the last week, 10 days, that trainers are sort of saying it's okay to go in and ride out again. Um, so, yeah, it, it's been tough for her because, as I say, when you cut all those contacts and um, as racing stops, it, this game is so fickle. You're eight weeks without a ride, everyone will have forgotten about you. That's how it is, as well you know. Oh, absolutely. Hopefully, with uh, with uh, Grace winning the award last year, or this was it this year? Um, uh, yeah, yeah, it was, it was for this or weather season. Yeah, so hopefully the, the mind will be uh, still active and, and you can get out and get some winners early on. Uh, finally, just one more question from me. I saw there was a new filly from Ireland arrived today. Yeah, yeah. Um, how is how is she going to be? Uh, working out over the next yeah well i mean obviously the situation there's a lot of two-year-olds out there that aren't going to be going to breeze themselves etc and we're very fortunate some chaps in ireland Ireland contacted me a month or so ago and they've got a couple of two-year-olds there's a filly there by colsty who's arrived today and then there's a uh a gelding by showcasing who's going to come in a couple of weeks so um yeah, no, we're lucky. As I say, she she looks all right. She looks correct. But I mean, we haven't. I haven't really bothered with the two year olds over the last five or six years. If I'm totally honest with you, we kind of concentrated on the older horses. But that's six we've got now with that filly arriving today, and with the showcasing coming, we'll have seven. So, listen, back ten years ago, when there was lots of sellers and claimers, Dave Evans, Stan Moore, myself, we used to. We used to have runners in the Brocklesby on the Thursday and head straight to Wolverhampton on the Saturday night with them to try and win that cellar, you know, and it was all a lot of fun. But the two-year-old game changed a lot over here. Um, so we knocked it on the head. But luckily, they've announced to the BHA that one-third of the two-year-old program for the rest of the year is going to be auction races and median auction races, which will give us all a bit of a chance. And um, we've got one two-year-old that's literally a fortnight away from running. Um but yeah, that filly, as I say, they tell me she's broken in and ridden away. Um, <laughs> uh, we, I had a bit of a joke with the owner when we turned up. We obviously forgot to put her shoes on. But no, listen, she she looks all right. She's bred to be early by Coles, who's by Kodiak, all speed in the family. So um, tell Grace she'll be getting on her in the morning and we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, fantastic. That's good. That's good to hear. 
Um, over, over to you, Dean. Um, hi, guys. Um, I was just looking there last night, Phil. Uh, I think you, you had a 12% strike rate uh, so far in, in 2020. Um, with all that's happened, has that hindered any of your plans for horses? You know, had you mapped out a route that you wanted to go with certain horses? Uh, not really is the answer to that. We kind of made hay early on in the year with the the, 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 the all-weather horses, um, so they would have been having a break. Usually, we're always slow in anyway the first couple of months of the turf season because we don't, most of our horses we run all winter on the all weather, you know. Um, so one thing's for sure, it's give them all a nice break. They can all have a chance to freshen up. I mean, the one also we're looking forward to this year would be split down south, you know. Um, I know he's gone up a lot in the rating on the all weather, but personally, I think it'd be a better horse going in a straight line with a bit of juice in the ground, you know. I mean, we bought him, he used to be trained in Ireland, uh, and we bought him... We bought him uh, Ascot Sales. You know, he had some good form in Maidens in Ireland. You finish third or fourth in a current Maiden or a Nace Maiden, you're all right, you know, and he only got a rating of 60. And he had some good form over seven pounds in a mile on soft ground. Personally, I felt looking at the replays of the races, he didn't stay. And, um, you know, I think that's going to be the case. I think it'd be a nice six furl on horse later in the year on soft ground. So he's one we're looking forward to. You know, we had a nice filly last year that we bought from Ireland, Philippine Cobra. She was the same. She had the same profile. Had bits and pieces of the form in maidens, and she won a couple of nice races for. And uh, we sent. She's in America now. Yeah, um, I was just looking actually through your record of when whenever you get horses into your yard. I'm just going to name a few. Like the spare parts there, won four out of his first five. Few split down south, won two of his first four. Uh, Elusive won three of four. Philippine Cobra, as he says, won two out of six. Um, Asha one, one, two, and she was second in the other one. Like, you know, them's, that's a mighty impressive record for new horses coming under the yard to get them one so soon. You know, it m must really please the owners. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, obviously, my guy owners have got limited budgets, so there's not a lot of money to spend. So what we try and do is just look at their replay and think, you know, is there anything that we felt you know, split down South's case, he didn't stay in a seven and he didn't stay in a mile on soft ground, you know, and you you stop the races sometimes a furlong out or a furlong and a half out and he, they look the winners, you know, and things like that. And uh, that Inchar, for instance, he dropped to such a low mark. He His second run back, he injured himself, actually, and that's what happened to him. Philippine Cobra, she ran in, she won, she was second first time on her first run first, then she won her next two, then she ran in a hundred grand race at Newmarket, and then unfortunately she bled the last time. Um, but she's a real smart filly, and that's why we kept the owner, kept her, and we shipped her out to um, Jerry O'Dwyer trains her now and, uh, at Laurel Park. So, yeah, no, listen, the horse that we got from Charlie Hills is Spare Parts. He was rated 46. We definitely felt he was better than his mark. Um, and we're lucky, you know. I mean, I'm, I ride out. I'm, I'm mates with a lot of the jockeys that ride some of these horses, and they give you feedback as well. And so we try and get them in our yard, sweeten them up. And, you know, you, a 46-rated horse in the big yards sometimes can be lost and forgotten about. So, um, yeah, no, we're proud, you know. And that's why, as I say, we've got two owners, Steve Jakes and Trevor Johnson. You know, they've been with me for seven, eight, nine, ten years. I mean, Trevor Johnson... The most expensive horse he ever bought was thirty thousand, and he was telling me the other day that he had that's his eighty seventh winner he's had with me in ten years. That's a good number. Like yeah, um, I just see spare uh, spare parts improved thirty four pounds, and split down south for his five ones has improved twenty eight pounds. Like so, you've as you say there, like you know them horses will be. Underlooked at some of the bigger yards, but it just goes to show that that's a money maker. Yeah, no, and I mean, especially you know, sp spare parts for instance. I think he was a hundred and eighty grand yearling or something ridiculous, and split down south was an expensive yearling. He's by Dark Angel, you know. Um, so these are the horses we try and get. Um, Philippine Cobra was a showcase in Philly. Um, you know, her second dam is the dam of Earthlight. You know, this is an unbelievable pedigree. That's why we sent it to America and kept it. We were hoping Earthlight would come and win the French guineas or something this year. But 
anyway so yeah no listen we as i say we try and do homework and then um and then once we get them try and try and improve them mm. or not necessarily improve them just you know get them to where they should be yeah um Grace, you've got a, a great record there around Chelmsford and Wolverhampton with a 15% strike rate and a, a 10% at Southwell. I can remember recently, well, I think it was the side of the new year, the one of split down South Rides at uh, Southwell. You'd sweep around the outside and it, it was a breeze. Like, you know, is a horse like that very helpful for you for learning going forward? Um, yeah, well, obviously, because I work for Dad, I ride him out every day at home. I don't really let anybody else ride him. It's my ride. So I know him so well from just riding him out at home. So that helps a lot. But at the track, he's not, he doesn't help me out the most. He's quite slow away at the stalls. And you can't, he takes a while to get into his stride. So he likes to keep out wide and out of trouble so that he gets a smooth run. Because if he gets caught in his run or horse stops him in his run, it can lock him back and it takes him a while to get back into his stride. So it's he's quite simple once you get him up they just got to keep him out wide and out of trouble yeah um how, how i know martin touched on it but how, how are you coping yourself with this whole lockdown and as the there's a there was i read somewhere where there was a planned proposal for only senior jockeys to be back riding whenever race returned is, is there any more on that from the bha or anything um, I believe that they are going to possibly be letting three pound and five pound claimers ride, um, but it's not being confirmed yet. Um, but it has been hard, such as trying to keep fit and the weight right, obviously, because there's no gym, so you've just been relying on whatever you can do from home. But um, as of today, we're allowed to start going up to the British Racing School um, to see our jockey coaches and get some practice in on the simulator. So I went up there today to see my jockey coach, Michael Tebbett. Um, obviously, that's under kind of strict COVID-19 um, restrictions, but it's just good to get back training now, and hopefully racing will be back on soon. Yeah. Um, would you be pretty active on, on the likes of uh, Twitter and that every day, Grace? Would you? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much on all social medias every day. Yeah. They. Uh, what? What I was going to say. I, I asked Poppy Bridgewater this too. For instance, like you know, keyboard warriors. Like you know, there seems to be more and more of them becoming coming out of their shells these days like you know yeah. how does that affect somebody such as yourself who, who's you know young 18 year old girl you know whenever you, you maybe think to yourself ah jeez you know you, maybe you know yourself you've done something wrong in the race yeah. and you, you know it's troubling you but then whenever you come on twitter and you see you know these brave people sitting behind a keyboard or a phone and, and giving you a pile of grief like how does that make you feel yeah, for sure. It's not easy because once you've messed up on a ride or you've not given one the best ride, you know that yourself. So the last thing you need is to go on Twitter and people that people like giving you grief about it. It's, you know it already, so you don't need to be reminded of it kind of thing. But I think it's just a matter of putting it to the side and just moving on. Tomorrow's another day. Um, and at the end of the day, they're just probably lost a few quid in the horse. Their, their opinion not that it's irrelevant, but it's something that you just got to move on with and get. It's just part. I guess it's part of being a jockey. Mo every jockey gets it, regardless of who you are or where you are at, at that point. Yeah, like you know, I, like thankfully, you know, I, we wouldn't know. Me and our, or the lads wouldn't know anything about it. Like, but like you know, seeing some abuse that some people take, like you would think to yourself, if there, if you were in their shoes, like. It will be hard. It's, it's a hard one to swallow because you, you know that person doesn't exactly know the full story behind yeah, exactly. why a horse run bad or or what happened like that. But yet, no, they're quick to jump as you say because they've lost their fiver or their tenner and you know yeah. that they're bet really. Like. Yeah, exactly. You could just be sitting at home and you just see what's on the screen. Whereas for all you know, the horse might have stopped and it's running. They just think you've done. They've you've given it a bad ride. But for all you know, the horse has bled or something else has happened to it. So. You only just see what's on the screen. Where's a lot more is going into it behind the scenes that not many people would actually realise. Yeah. Um, have you been keeping busy yourself with lockdown? You know, any like you know, any activities? Do you take up baking or anything like that? I see a lot of people these days are baking and and, and making breads and banana breads over here in Ireland. I don't know, but uh, have you been up to any of that activities? Um, yeah, well, I tried baking to begin with, but my sister didn't approve of it, so that one soon stopped. Um, it didn't last long that being a baker so I've just been basically doing a lot of cycling and running and anything else that I can kind of do to keep myself busy eating eating <laughs> I get <laughs> that one after, after week after week four of lockdown we all felt we'd put on a lot of weight so we decided we were gonna 
have a family weigh in every Friday and I'm pleased to announce that I've lost eleven pounds, so I'm doing well. <laughs> you're you're flying you're flying full, so you're yeah, everyone the the, the, the way it used to be twelve o'clock on the Friday, it's now about half six in the morning, so everyone can start eating as soon as we've weighed in. So <laughs> most Thursday nights there's not a lot of dinner around here at the moment. I would say I would say now in the run up to, to the resumption of racing, I'd say the the, the biscuit drum will be well hidden from Grace and I to make sure that she uh, she's in tip top condition. Yeah, no, well, listen, it's handy that they've been able to get up to the British Racing School with their jockey coaches again, you know, because there's only so much, you know, you've got to be very self motivated. I know Grace went and got a bike and she's been doing plenty of cycling. And, you know, six, eight weeks ago when you're racing, we were galloping horses, riding out three lots, you're flat out, your metabolism's going, isn't it, you know? Um, I bump into, we see the jockeys all the time in town. Everybody's kind of saying the same thing. You know, and there's most of the senior jockeys have put on plenty of weight. There's no question about that. They're trying to get trying to get back into the groove. You know, if you're racing five, six, seven days a week, you're up and down the motorways, going day meeting to night meeting, you never, ever switch off. You know, some of these jockeys uh, have switched off completely for seven, eight weeks now. Yeah. You know, to the point where they haven't been able to go and ride out. They haven't been able to. They've only just started back riding out in the last few weeks, really. Um, you know, and it's going to be tough for everybody to flip the switch and be back into hyperdrive on from the outset. You know, it's going to take a bit. I think it's going to take a bit of adjusting for everybody. That's for sure. Yeah, especially now whenever there's plans to the you know the the saunas and steam rooms and things like that. There are off the yeah, the carriage they're, they're, at the racetracks. Yeah, they're not allowed, they're not going to be allowed to use them. Um, everybody's restricted to one meeting, um, so it's going to be a huge change in everyone's lives because it's going to be strange, even though you're back racing, to be able to only go to one meet. I mean, I'm not even sure if I have a runner. If I don't, if I drive the box and take it myself, I'm going to have to lead it up or send somebody and not go. You know, we're all mm-hmm. going to be restricted to one person per thingy. So, yeah, as I say, it would be a strange one, but. We've got two there, Kamachu, another one. He's ready to go. Um, I just had a look the first week. It doesn't look a lot for him, but he's another one that hadn't been out the first four in his last six, seven runs. So we've got two to go to try and kickstart Grace going again as well, you know? Yeah. Um, any, is, there, is there any knack to, like, you know, finding the potential that a horse has? You know, say if one's lost his way, you know, do you move them on or do you think, you know, do, do you try and uncover? Honest, yeah, um, you know, mostly if they're, any, if they're no good at all, we try and get rid of them ultimately. Unless, but, you know, we've, we've got a horse there, Pearl Spectre at the moment. He's dropped to 50 now. I mean, when he was in his pump, he was rated in the 90s, you know. Yeah. Um, and he's another horse that we had won a lot of races with. But off 50, he's so well handicapped. He's still sound. He loves his racing. He's had a nice long break, you know. We have a lot of turnout here. As I say, I've got plenty of my own paddocks and I rent 20 acres off the jockey club. So we try to do a lot of that to sweeten them up, you know. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, as I say, split down south. He's, he's all... You know, he, we seem to have got found the key to him, and um, I, I think there's more to come from him when we get a bit of juice in the ground and go straight on the six furlongs. Yeah, he was one of the ones that that, that I had a good few uh, a bet on near enough all the time over the winter campaign. There, well, you know, I've won, me, won say, me a few I've points. Him, I've, when he won first time up, we ran him and uh, over seven furlongs. Josie rode him uh, and first time up, and he just just didn't get a run and he finished fifth running on and then we gave him a few weeks off and Grace had I'd kind of said to the owner look I really want to get Grace on this horse now she's riding him out every day and she'll take the seven off he was rated 59 and Grace took the seven off and he, I said to the owner I think this is an 80 horse he's not fit he's half fit but I think he'll still win with Grace's seven off and he was 16 to one and sure enough, he got up and won ahead on him, and he wasn't fit. We knew he'd improved tons for that run, yeah. and, uh, and then he went in again next time, you know. And by the time he'd had his third run for me, he was only just getting fit then. Yeah. But an eighty horse will win off sixty all day long if they're 80, 75% eighty-five percent eighty fit, you know. Yeah. 
the key to it is we're lucky. I ride out every day. Grace knows how we roll. She, I trust her judgment on a horse, you know, and we can soon work out between us what we think one's going to be capable of, you know. And you yeah, only well, need one or two touches a year like that, and that helps pay the exes as well, doesn't it, you know? Well, that's it. Like, you know, as you say, as you touched on, like, you're a small operation. So, like, you know, if you're not fair to have a pound down on it and, a, and it comes off you, like, you know, it, it must help massively towards the overheads that that a lot of small businesses elsewhere would be struggling with. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, the, 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 the tax-free lolly that you get from having a touch on one, <laughs> that, that's the sweetest money of all, you know. It, that doesn't yeah. go anywhere near the business. That makes that makes sure you can have a little holiday or perhaps upgrade your car and stuff like that, <laughs> or have home improvements. But, you know, 16 to 1, and they're happy to bookies. You know, Grace was claiming seven. We we uh, we made hay this winter because the bookies and uh, and the punt and the pe- they're happy to lay you. Yeah. You know, if all of a sudden you have Adam Kirby jumped up to ride it and blah de blah, you, you get six to one instead of sixteen to one. You know, so. Yeah. Um. No, listen. We he was the horse that made the difference for us. You know, last back end of the year and, and early part of this year. So. If we can unearth one again, Philippine Cobra last year, she was an absolute touch as well early on. So we just need to unearth another one or two little diamonds between now and the end of the year, you know? Yeah. It's good to actually hear, you know, a, a trainer speaking about, about about this, like, because, you know, you, you often see, as touching on the, the keyboard warriors and the criticism that the jockeys come in for, but trainers come in for criticism as well, like, and about uh getting thing me but always hear the term it's it's a fixed sport and this that and on i argue the point that it's not a fixed sport because you know fairness it, it might not work one day for a horse and you might one two or three days later or a week later but you know it's as as we say there on it's the things that could go wrong the horse might not get the run you know get blocked in or, or something might happen and, you know and it's good to see that at the end of the day, I think everybody, we all, we're all, we're all out to beat the bookies, I suppose, aren't we? Yeah, exactly. I mean, the, re- the reality is, listen, every horse of ours tries every time they run. It's just, you know, all of these horses that we have touches with, we get from other yards, you know. Yeah. They've already done the job for me. All we got to do is work out what its trip is, what its mark is, and then gung-ho, you know. And as yeah. I say, I, I love going to the races with a horse that I think really well handicapped and he's going to improve for the run because you can bet it twice if not three times i don't generally like going back to the well once he'd won his second run for us that was it i was done with betting but down there and you know because as i say i i'll never run them first time 100 percent fit because where do you go from there you know but if you can we, we've got one or two old horses in this yard that you can gallop them up the Alba Hatchery and, and you can work out a horse's rate into the pound from them, you know? Yeah. Good stalwart for the, the yard. Yeah, exactly. You know, and, and personally, you know, I prefer having, um, you know, before Grace, we had Nicola Curry rode spare parts throughout his old yeah. career. She was claiming seven at the time. She used to come and ride out twice a week for us. We always go and try and get an apprentice as our stable jockey because 99 times out of 100, they'll do the best they can. If they make a mistake, fair enough, you know, we'll all learn from it. But you're always getting value for your, for your, yeah. you're getting your seven and a half or your five off and you're getting value for your bet, for your money. Yeah, exactly. Like, you know, and, and the English handicapper, I don't think is as harsh as the Irish handicapper. Like, you know, if, if you have a seven yeah, you point get game murdered on. over there, don't you? I remember sending one over there and it won. He put me up £10. <laughs> we, I, I on the, or I had a, ran a syndicate last year over here and we, we were lucky enough now, but we were unlucky in the same breath. Like, we managed to come second four times. Uh, Bellpower, you called the oh, horse. Yeah. And yeah. she, she she ran a cork one day and she ran second. She came from a good bit back, like we fancied her each way. But they we got seven pound for that for coming second. Or six or seven pound I think it was. But the winner had ran about seven or eight days beforehand at Navin and came second and only went up a pound. <laughs> and you're thinking, well, oh, could we not have went up a pound and then you know, like and then he murdered us again for getting beat a short 
or getting beat up Oscar at next. I think we got another six pounds for that there. It's like, you know, your mark, you're just thinking, oh, if you could have got your head in front, you wouldn't have minded the six pound. We'll come and say, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that yeah. is a hard pill to swallow. Right? Oh, it's a better pill to swallow. So it is. Ryan, have you anything? He's falling asleep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, obviously, you two work together. So, what's the relationship like between us? Um, yeah, no, I'd say it's pretty good. Um, now, I won't lie, there has been the odd silent journey back from the races. Because, <laughs> obviously, you know, we travel up to the races a lot together as well. But the relationship's good because we're all, to be honest with you, my I, my dad used to train years ago. My dad was champion apprentice in Ireland back in the 60s, believe it or not. And you wouldn't know it listening to me, but I'm Irish as well. So I used to live and work with my dad. And, uh, you know, the horses are your passion, aren't they? You know, every day is another day. I'm not somebody who holds a gripe. I've had over the decade, I've trained for 20 years. You know, how many bad rides have the horses been given? Lots. Do they do it on purpose? No. I'm, you know, I'd like to think I'm a bit of a mentor and we can sit down and go through them all. So, but I'm lucky, you know, as I say, we all live at home. Everybody gets on. We've got plenty of space here. Everyone does their own thing. All my daughters have their own cars. They all drive. Everyone's got their own freedom. But our working relationship's good. As I say, we love the job we do. Um, there ain't nothing better than go galloping one on a Saturday morning and Grace coming back and going, this will win, Dad. You know, that's all I want to hear. Those three <laughs> words, this will win. If I can hear that four times a year, I'm a happy man. <laughs> and um, just how many horses do you have in training? Um, when they're all in, we'll have 22. Um, at the, we've got nine in the yard at the moment, and we've got 13, 14 turned out over the road. So, yeah, we, we bought a couple in. This week, we've got London, Valley Bells, Slip Down South going. Um, so, yeah, we'll have about 22 in when they're all in, say, July, August time. Um, we've got a nice two-year-old, a Golden Horn filly, that we managed to get our hands on that's just been turned out. Um, she's one that we're looking forward to at the end of the year. You know, she was a book one filly that didn't make it. In the end, she was withdrawn from the sale. So, she's got the pedigree. If I can win a race with it, that's another... That's another one for the book. And I suppose with this all going on, what impact do you think the old weather tracks are going to have? Like, are we going to see a lot more races on them, I suppose? Um, it all depends, doesn't it, about this government criteria, et cetera, et cetera, you know? I mean, I don't know. Are they going to are they going to prolong the flat turf season now and push things back? I really don't know what's going to happen, but... You know, I love the all-weather racing. You know, you can plan a race six weeks, six months in advance and know what the surface is going to be. You know, you try and work things out on the turf here. It's impossible. You know, the ground changes and overwatering, you have a shower, whatever. I like the, I like the all-weather racing for the simplicity of it all. You know, you know what you're going to get. You know, Adam, most of the tracks, they're... You ride them the one way, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, um, yeah, I love the all-weather racing definitely, and it's it's where we, our bread and butter is. Yeah, it's the same as myself. There, I find the all-weather is a lot more competitive than the turf. Yeah, exactly. And as I say, you you know you can you it, it's easier to read, and it's the consistency of it all. You know, it, it it's a lot. It's an easier game to play. I personally think, and there's great prize money on the all-weather now. You get some good horses racing on the all-weather. And good prize money to be had. So, um, yeah, I, I certainly get, listen. It's because of the category of horse I have. I'm an all weather man, and that you know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But it, uh, that, that, I'm an all weather man. I'd be the same as yourself. I really enjoy going out to Dundalk every Friday, just watching it. Well, I'm telling. We had a few trips over to Dundalk, but. Um, yeah, the prize money got so good over here, we decided in the end it wasn't really worth it. And Dundalk, uh, d- over here, they, you've got a hostel to stay in and they look after you. And Dundalk, it's kind of, there's your stable, find yourself a hotel, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> but we had great crack in Laytown. That's one thing I've missed. I really enjoyed going over to Laytown. We went there two years on the trot. I think it was 2015 and 16. We had a winner over there. 
and um, that was great fun. So I do intend going back to Laytown, just not while the Jamie Osborne show is still going on. I can't deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jamie does be over here all the time. Yeah, yeah. Time. he won't mind me saying that. I give it to him all the time, you know. I went over <laughs> there in 2015, he never had a runner, and he ain't stopped going since. He drives me party. Yeah, and the, the dream is they want to win all six races and then they're going to walk away, but that's never going to happen. No, Leitown's just unpredictable, isn't it? Oh, well, I, the, the last time we went over there, I think it was three years ago, we stayed with Adam McGuinness. Yeah. And uh, yeah. He, he had a winner there. He told us it would win and it was 12 to 1. It was an unbelievable night. Mine got beat. Mine finished second, but Ado's won and we had a, got, had a right few quid on it. So that was another good, that was another good do. He's flying aid, I know, isn't he? he? Really is. He's such a fun guy as well. He's a good lad to go out and have a night out with. He lets us keep the horses there. He looks after us. He's brilliant. And he'll talk to absolutely anybody. Um. So, good evening, I suppose if there's one race you could pick to win, what would it be? One race that we could win. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I'm lucky. Dreamers. I had an all-weather championship winner with the Phillies and Mares um, the first year they ran that. So we've kind of done the good thing on the all-weather. I mean, I don't know. There's a, I really don't know. I think the Grey Horse race we want to win with Split Down South at Newmarket. That's a Saturday race on ITV, which is something I'd like to do for Grace. You know, it's all well and good riding these winners on the all-weather and but to get a Saturday winner on ITV would be good for her, especially on that horse, you know. And that would be right up the street, six furlongs at Newmarket. I think it's at the end of July, I want to say. Um, but, um, yeah, no specific targets. The races I want to win are the ones that I've had a few quid on. And, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice price. The ones that make you money, anyway. Exactly, exactly. Keep the owners happy. Yeah. And speaking of owners there, what do you do for the owners? Like, Do you give them video updates or weekly yeah, updates? Listen, we do indeed, yeah. Um, as I say, that the, there's four lads from Kildare that own know that filly that arrived today and the uh, showcase and it's coming. So they're all on WhatsApp. We had a WhatsApp video over when she arrived. And yeah, that's what we're doing with the owners we update them all with their videos of their horses galloping and little funny things that they get up to through during the day, et cetera, et cetera, because obviously owners can't be with their horses. They, yeah. If the only time they ever see them is at the races, it's, it's no good. You know, nowadays, social media, everybody's on, um, you know, we, we send WhatsApps to the owners most days of their horses, whether it's having a pick a graph, going up the gallop, having a wash off or whatever, you know, just to give them little updates. Um, and then near the time, they get to see the gallops the same as we do. Unless, of course, it gallops bad and then we delete it and send them nothing and tell them we didn't work it. <laughs> <laughs> keep them in the art. Yeah, no, exactly. I, she knocked a joint. No, of course we do. We keep them all updated and, you know, all the little funnies that the horses can do throughout the days as well. Well, that's really good that you do that because I know I some would, trainers just... I would, I was sort of videoing myself going through the stalls one day on one of um, a horse with somebody, and literally as he got to the back end of it, it bolted out the stalls, and the, the and the phone went flying. So <laughs> that was much to their delight. And then another that Pearl Spectre galloped into me in the paddock, flat out, and broke my arm. So that was on video as well. So I've been, I've suffered once or twice for my for my video to try it. But anyway, it's all good fun. Yeah, it definitely is. No pain, no gain, huh? Exactly. Well, that's really it for me. And Dean Martin, do you have anything, Dad? Just a couple of quick. F- we've we've the la the last couple of podcasts we've done there. We've just had a couple of quick fire questions. Yeah. Uh, we fire out, 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 fire them out for Grace. Um, it's just a needle or or really. It's just only about a fun and a, an okay. a crack. Um, prosecco or cocktails? Cocktails. Netflix or YouTube? Netflix. Snapchat or Instagram? Snapchat. Racing blogger or Matt Chapman? Oh, I'd say <laughs> Matt Chapman. Uh, Range Rover or Mercedes? Mercedes. Ascot or Goodwood? Ascot. Jim Crowley or Ryan Moore? Oh, Ryan Moore. 
that's it. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> Well, that wraps up another episode of the Racing Records podcast. This episode was, of course, for the Irish Cancer Society. We're trying to raise money for the Irish Cancer Society by doing a podcast marathon. We've already done a 14-kilometer run each. And if you would like to donate to that, the link for this or link for that will be in the description below. So you can go click that and check it out. And, um, of course, we'd like to thank Phil and Grace McIntyre for coming on now. So it's been an absolute privilege to have both of you on and you were a really great guest. So thank you for coming on. And to our viewers at home, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube to stay up to date with all our videos and go check out the marathon if you haven't already seen it. All right then guys, well, hopefully it was uh, was good stuff. And um, yeah, thanks thanks very much for getting in touch. Perfect, thank you for coming on. Thanks, right, guys. Thank you, guys. No problem. Thanks very much. Absolutely great to have you on. Okay. Thank Cheers. you. Bye. 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 Bye.